Hello and welcome to Art in a Story. We're here today in front of Rudy Audio's Yellow Horse, and my name is Claire Bonesteel. I am the, um, I'm an AmeriCorps VISTA serving at the Yellowstone Art Museum this year. And today we're gonna read a book called The Mud Pony, retold by Karen Lee Cohen. There was once a poor boy in an Indian camp who would watch by the creek as other boys watered their ponies. More than anything, he longed for a pony of his own. So at last, the boy crossed the creek, dug the wet earth, and shaped a pony out of mud. He gave it a white clay face. He loved his mud pony. Every day, he went to it and took care of it as if it, was, as if it were real. One day, while the boy was with his mud pony, scouts rode into camp. We have sighted buffalo several days journey west, they said. The people broke camp, for they would starve in the months ahead if they didn't hunt the buffalo. The boy's parents looked everywhere, but they couldn't find him. Finally, they had to leave without him. When the boy got back to camp, he saw that everyone was gone. My people, he cried out, I will never find you. I am all alone. He wandered, heartsick and hungry, around the empty camp, picking up scraps of dried meat and a tattered old blanket someone had thrown away. He ate, then huddled up in the blanket and cried himself to sleep. As he slept, he dreamt his mud pony was alive and spoke to him. My son, you are not alone. Mother Earth has given me to you. I am part of her. When the boy woke at daybreak in the empty camp, he cried for his people. Then he went to his mud pony and could hardly believe his eyes. The white-faced pony was alive, tossing her mane and pawing the ground. She spoke like the pony in his dream. My son, you are not alone. Mother Earth has given me to you. I am part of her. You must do as I say, and someday you will be a chief among your people. They are far away. Get on my back, and I will take you to them. But do not try to guide me, for I know where to go. For three days, they journeyed over the plains. The boy was worn and hungry, but he would not give up. He let the pony guide him. Then, at the third nightfall, the boy saw smoke curling from, up from teepees in a camp. They had reached his people. Go and find your parents, said the pony, but leave them before dawn. It is not time yet for the others to see you. I will be waiting in the hills. Now cover me with the blanket to protect me from the rain, for I am part of Mother Earth. The boy went into the camp. He wandered among the teepees until he found the smallest one. He went in and drew, threw dried grass into the fire, so a blaze went up. In the fire's light, he saw his mother and woke her. Here I am, he said. She touched him and tears came into her eyes. Then his father woke up and marveled at how the boy had found them when they had gone so far away. Before dawn, the boy told his parents, I must go now, on my own. He left them, but from the hills he turned and watched as the people broke camp to continue on their way to the buffalo. At last, they disappeared. For three more days, the boy and the pony journeyed over the plains. The boy was weary and had no food at all, but he kept on going. Finally, at the third nightfall, he saw a camp in the distance. There are your people, the pony said. It is time that you join them. Ride me into camp. And the boy did, and all of the people came out of their teepees, astonished to see him. A war chief invited him into a big teepee. There was soup and dried meat and two buffalo horn spoons in a wooden bowl. They ate together. Mawatiki, the war chief saluted him. You journeyed over strange land, starving and alone, and yet you found us. You have a gift, a great power, and now you must help our people. An enemy has attacked us on our way west, killing men, keeping us from reaching the buffalo. At daybreak, you must join us in battle. When the boy left the big teepee, he trembled, but the pony spoke to him. My son, do not be afraid, for I am part of Mother Earth, and the enemy's arrows can never pierce the earth. Put earth all over your body, and you will not be hurt. At daybreak, he covered his body with earth and rode the pony straight into the fight. There was a fierce battle, but he led his people to victory. 
At last, the people were free for the hunt, and the boy on the white-faced pony showed the way, capturing more buffalo than any of the grown men. Years passed, and always the boy let his pony guide him. Always he was a powerful leader. Finally, he was made a chief. As a chief, he had a corral full of fine horses, but the white-faced pony was his great gift. He tied many eagle feathers into her mane and tail, and every nightfall he carefully covered her with a blanket to protect her from the rain. Then one night while he slept, the pony came to him in a dream. My son, now you are a chief among your people, a chief with the power of Mother Earth. It is Mother Earth who gives, the, gives you the power and not I. I am part of her and it is time that I go back to her. You must let me go. The chief got up in the dark and went to his pony. She pawed the ground and tossed her mane in the wind. Take my blanket, she said. He did. Then he went to his teepee. Just before daybreak, he woke to shrill winds and rushing rain. He ran to his corral and looked everywhere for his white-faced pony. He couldn't find her. Then, as the morning light broke over the wet earth, the chief saw a patch of white clay, and through the wind, he heard a voice. I am here, your mother earth. You are not alone. Thanks for watching Art in a Story.